Okay, so let us go and look at these particular problems from the AP Calculus 22, 2022 free responses. So we have our first question here that talks about the rate of vehicles arriving to a toll plaza and it's given by a function. So I'm going to go ahead and come to my grapher and uh, adjust my expression and come in and enter in my function which is 450 times a square root of the sine of 0 0.62 right, times my variable and that seems to be my function t is in hours right so I've got my function set up um, does it give me an interval from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m.? So that would be um, from, I guess, 0 to 5. So let's go ahead and adjust this and set my plot restriction to be from 0 and to 5. Okay, so I'll go ahead and come in and I'll plot my graph to have an idea. All right, let me get my axes so I can get the general shape of my graph. So here's my general graph. So write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the total number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza. So I need to write, but not uh, provide. So I'm just going to do this up here because it doesn't take too much time. So I'm going to have the integral from 1 to 5 of A of T dt is going to represent how many vehicles are arriving okay and it looks like that's a little bit tough to see in the pencil so let me switch over here to pen and see if that looks a little bit stronger for us all right wonderful so then we want to find the average value of the rate so the average value of the rate in vehicles per hour at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza from t equals 1 to 5. So that's going to be our 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of our function. And we want to go ahead and actually find this um, average rate, right? And so we're going to go ahead and use our calculator to do that work. And let's go ahead and come back to our home screen. So I have one fourth. All right, so I've got one fourth here and times an integral. So I've got calculus and integral, and it's the integral from one to five of my function. So let's go ahead and come over to my function. All right, and that's the function, and it's just of x. And so I want to figure out this value. And so that's about 375.536. So 375.536. And for our AP calculus, we just need to be correct to three decimal places. If we wanted to round, we could, but we just need to express our answer correct to three decimal places. Then, is the rate at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza increasing or decreasing? Give a reason for your answer. Well, anytime we're asked to give a reason, we can think about that first. We want the rate of the vehicles arriving, increasing or decreasing. So we need A prime of T, right? So A prime of C being less than zero implies that our rate is decreasing. All right, so we want this derivative at 1. Okay, so I can do that from here. Let's go ahead and say I want the derivative of my f of x function, so f of x, and I want the value of that derivative at 1. And so that gives me 148.947. All right, so... A prime of 1 equals 148.947. So therefore, rate is increasing. All right. So our rate is increasing 
at one hour, meaning that there are more cars arriving at at the end of the first hour than there were arriving earlier on in the time period. And of course, we could see that from the graph that we had previously as well. We could come back and look at our graph and we can see that if we were to go to x equals one, oops. All right, if we were to go to x equals one, we can see that we have a positive slope and we can also see the value of my function at one All right what's nice that we can also do is that we can set up to see the value of our derivative as well we can see the value of our derivative right down here 148.947 which is the value that we got then a line form whenever uh, my arrival rate is greater than or equal to 400 per hour the number of vehicles is given by this, and that's gonna be how many vehicles are in the line. And A is the time when the line first begins to form, and a line forms if I'm greater than or equal to 400. So then I need to the nearest whole number, the greatest number of vehicles, all right? So technically for part D, I'm gonna need to do a candidates test and that's because I'm working with the extreme value theorem, right? I'm looking for the greatest number of vehicles in this closed time interval. So I'm going to go ahead and come and I'm going to add the line f of x equals 400, all right? So now it's going to be g of x, it's going to be 400. Right, and I can come over here and I can plot so I can see my general graph, right? And I'm going to go ahead and draw this here so I can have a better idea as to what is happening, right? So I basically have for my function, and right, I've got my graph that kind of looks like this, and I know that up here we're at 400. And I need to figure out this first time period, and then I need to figure out this second time period. So I'm going to go ahead and figure those out on my calculator. So let's go ahead and calculate. And I want the intersection. All right, so my first intersection seems to be at um, 1.469, 1.4693. So T1, which is A, is 1.4693. And T2, I'll just go ahead and call B, all right? And if I arrow to the next intersection, there we are. And that's 3.5977. Um, so 3.5977, all right? So I'll set that up there. Okay, so now, I need to find this value, and I want to figure out when I have the greatest, okay? Well, at when the line first starts to form, I'm looking at n of a, right? And n of a is going to be the integral from a to a of a of x minus 400 dx, which is 0, right? I also need to figure out what do is my value at the end of my interval, Right, the value at the end of my interval is at n of 4. Right, so n of 4 I need to figure out. So I'm going to go ahead and back out and make a calculation. And n of 4 is going to be given by an integral from uh, the value of a is 1.4693. So 1.4693 all the way to 4. And my function is um, a of x. So let's type in my function, which was this one, all right, minus 400. And I want to figure out that value, which is 62.33, 62.338. So 62.338. And I also need to figure out where n prime is equal to zero. I need to figure out these critical points. Well, n prime right, n prime of t is 
the derivative with respect to t of the integral from a to t of a of x minus 400 dx. And that's going to be given by simply a of t minus 400 using my fundamental theorem of calculus. Of course, we could come over here and just think generally, right? That if I look at how my line forms, if I look at how my line forms, right? My line starts to form when I have more than 400. So that means that I am accumulating cars all the way up to this point, this time t2. And then at this time t2, I am no longer accumulating cars, right? That there are no more uh, cars forming in the line, so everything that was in the line would then be heading out. So let me go ahead and say, what is that value at 3.5977, right? And I can come over and look at my calculator and say, okay, well, what is gonna be, how many cars are gonna be in my line at 3.5977? And that is 71.25, right? So when do I have the greatest number of vehicles? So therefore, the greatest number of vehicles is approximately 71 because it says to the nearest whole number, All right? So greatest number of vehicles is approximately 71. And that is the work for this particular problem. If we were wanting to figure out uh, how many points would each part be worth, we can look to this and say, this one is right, but don't evaluate. This is most likely just one mark. Over here, find the average value, right? And I would expect this to have one mark for the setup and one mark for the answer, right? And then is the rate increasing or decreasing? I would expect to have one mark for the correct um, rate and then one mark for the answer with the reasoning, right? So because, uh, you know, if our derivative is negative, we're decreasing. Well, our derivative is positive, so therefore we are increasing. And then here for the last piece running through our candidates test, I imagine that finding this A value correct is going to be one mark. There's a total of nine marks. So one, two, three, four, five. That means that there are four marks left for this last one, right? So I imagine that it's going to be one mark for finding this particular time. And then I would imagine that evaluating, right, that if we do the candidates test, candidates test, is going to be right one mark for attempting the candidate's test, one mark for considering all of the appropriate candidates, and then one mark for the correct final answer. And for the candidate's test, right, that we have no extra and no missing values, right? So meaning that if I came through and I considered, right, let's say that I had this value of C and I considered um, N at C, right? And I said, hey, what's that value? Well, now I'm considering a value that doesn't need to be considered. So I would probably would not get this additional point. And that's generally how these AP problems are scored. So there are nine marks. And so we have one, two, three, four, four part D. And then one, two for part C, one, two for part B, and one for part A. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.